Welcome back to my Red Hat Process Automation How-To video series. Today I'm going to show you how to handle web service task errors. Let's get right to it. In the last video, I have shown you how to set up a web service call. If you are a PAM user, how do you normally do error handling? Do you attach a boundary error and then create additional tasks to actually handle the error recovery? This approach is akin to programming before the event of exceptions, meaning that after each function call, you right away examine the return code to determine whether the function call has been successful. If not, then you just uh, do whatever is required to do that. For example, we try, this works. But imagine that you have a large number of uh, service tasks. If you have to create a, a boundary error and then the additional tasks to handle uh, each of these service call errors, this means that there are a lot of work need to be done and it is quite inconvenient. There is actually a better way to do that. Before that, let me just uh, delete this thing here. Do you know that the web service task alias the web work item handler actually allows you to trigger the instantiation of an error handling business process to deal with the error, this is based on exception. To do that, you have to add an extra parameter. Call handle response error. You set it to true. What this does is that for any error that was returned by the service call, that is any code other than 20x is going to generate this error and that error is going to generate an exception and that exception will trigger the instantiation of the error handling process. Now let us have a look at what this error handling process looks like, the one that I created. You can see the first thing that it does is go through these business rules, task, these rules are very simple. All it does is to implement an error count. The trick here is that uh, you, you need to set up a stable session for that. And then the next thing it does is determine the number of retries at, the, at present. So if you look at this normal retry, you can see that whenever the error count is smaller than or equal to three, it will go to via this path. That means it will wait for a certain amount of time and then terminate the business process. And you can actually configure the West work item handler to do a number of things on termination, either to retry, which is what I have configured to do, to abort or to complete that task. Right? What happens if the number of retries have exceeded three? Then it enters this manual intervention user task. So you ask, you may ask, what can I do in here? It's quite a bit actually. For example, if you have found out that the call fails because it's missing a certain parameter, you can add it back in this user task. Or just that you want to change certain parameters before uh, doing the retry, you can do that as well. So in today's demo, what I'm going to show you is how this works. Let me just get back to the uh, business process here. You can see that when we start this business process, it will call this external service. So in order to force error recovery, what I have done is I've already disabled this, this external service call, so it will not be reachable. So it will force the error handling to happen. Now, let me start the demo. Let's go to process definition. I'm going to start this process. 
the sample request just need the name. So what I'm going to enter is this. John Fei, then submit. Now it's a process instance seven. So let me just get to uh, process instances. You can see that right away, there's an error handling process instance there because I have disabled that external surface and it's getting here. So if you look at the diagram, so it's actually finished this one. So if you go back and look at it, so there's a new error handling here. So it's actually waiting for the timeout. So it's the second time it's doing that. So it's a process instant nine. It will take a bit of time to actually uh, exceed that uh, free retries. Let me just fast forward to it. Now, it has expired all the free retries. Now it's on the fourth one, which should be in the user task. Let's have a look at the user task. Oh, before we do that, let's just examine this. The diagram, yes, is in the user task. And you look at the process variables. It's telling you that uh, well, that particular surface is not found. It's not reachable. And if you look at the content data, so this is the name I enter, John Fake. Now let's get that user task. Click on that. First of all, I have to claim it. Then I'm going to start it. And I just realized that uh, earlier that I have entered the name of uh, the person wrongly instead of John Fake. It should have been John Wick. And this is what I'm going to uh, correct. So what I can do here is I enter John Wick in here. So I say come. Oh, before I do compete, let me just uh, restart that uh, surface so that it can go through. So I just started that uh, surface from another window. So let's, let's compete this. So it's done. If I go back to process instances, there are no, lo there are no more active ones. So if I look at this competed one, West call is done. Let's look at these process variables. There you go. So, so the name has been changed from John Fake to John Wake because you can see that uh, the return error me uh, the returned message is hello John Wake instead of a John Fake, which is the original information you entered. And this is what you can do with a centralized approach to error handling for all your West. Uh, service calls. Today I'm only showing you uh, what the end product looks like. If you want to find out exactly how this is configured or implemented, you have to tune in for my next video. Until then, have a good day. Thank you.